So on today's podcast, another interesting guest, we have coach Joao Carlos Pereira from Portugal, born in Angola, retired as a player at the age of 25 and begun coaching at the age of 32. Coach Joao is a UEFA pro licensed coach who's had a 25-year career, coached in Kuwait, Cyprus, Qatar, Switzerland, and of course, Portugal. So Coach Joao, thank you for agreeing to be on this podcast. How are you? And let's hear about a, a bit more about your journey. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I'm I'm okay. Thank you very much. First of all, I I would like to express my gratitude for your invitation. I, in fact, I I'm I'm in 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 football coaching for more than twenty five years, almost thirty, and uh, yeah, I've been I've been uh, having the possibility to experience different um, landscapes, different. Uh, environments which I've, i i believe it uh, has been very rich for my my career and uh, well i even though i've been here or i'm around for uh, almost three decades i i still have a lot to 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 do and to learn from so it's a, a great pleasure to be in football coaching Definitely, and uh, it's you've you've had quite a rich experience. Can you tell us more about you know how this entire journey started from whenever it did till now? Please, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, right from when you started your your coaching career till now, how did how did this journey happen? Look, I I was a football player. I I played as a since a kid. I reached professional level, and uh, then I had uh, a big injury. I struggled to 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 recover from it. At that time, having an ACL uh, injury would be quite uh, sentencing uh, to to players' careers. And uh, well, I noticed that my level was not going to be the same as it used to be. And uh, I continued to play, uh, but uh, not at the professional level. So uh, from, uh, I don't know, I think I was around 25, 26. I continued uh, uh, connected to football playing, but uh, in a, third league level, second league level. Uh, and um, I started to focus also on my education. Initially, initially, it was not my goal to become a football coach because I felt at that time I didn't... Uh, it was something that I would not enjoy much to go to. But uh, and I, I I also believe I did not have the right profile at that time, but uh, circumstances took me to this uh, to this path. So when I when I decided to when I finished my studies, <clears throat> which were in um, management, uh, not sports even, it was a general management. And uh, I decided to stop playing, and uh, all of a sudden, sudden I was invited to be part of a project in uh, my first club. I refused, but they insisted, and in the end, I started to replace uh, a coach that he was my coach before. Uh, he got sick, and unfortunately for him, he could not come back. So here I am after all these years. What was really interesting is that you have actually coached three clubs that you played for as a player. So was there anything about you as a player that, you know, the clubs may have seen and thought that, okay, maybe maybe this player has the potential of one day leading the team? I don't know if it's related to that, but um, it's, it's a fact that it happened. I could have even uh, coached uh, more of the, of the teams I, I, I played for. Uh, I think some clubs they have a, a particular uh, way to to recruit their coaches, 
uh, some of them, of course, they they have a, a profile and they look for uh, the the person to fit this profile. But others, they just look for someone who was playing for them in order they they find an, uh, someone who is related or uh, who identifies with the the values and the the um, the image of the club. I don't know which was in my which were in my cases the reasons, but it's a fact. Um, this helps a lot uh, when you you decide to to coach a previous club you played for, because in the end you know the environment, you have a better, a deeper knowledge of the 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 context you are working in and. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I think uh, it's it was what it was, and uh, there there was always, uh, even though there were always challenges, because you know football is very dynamic and uh, very un unpredictable in some cases or in most of the cases, and uh, this this was part of my 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 journey. And your journey has also had you coaching top division clubs as well as lower division clubs. So, according to you, what are what were some differences you felt in you know when you were coaching a top division club as opposed to a lower lower division club? Well, the, this is quite a quite interesting question because in the end, look, football is football. No matter no matter which league you are uh, working in. Um, you will have always, as I told you before, we will you we will always have to face challenges, uh, problems. We always will have to support uh, our, our uh, ourselves in each other, with the players, with the board. Uh, um, the very essence and the nature of the job uh, is quite similar. I believe what what changes the most or the main biggest differences is the fact that there's less exp, uh, exposition in um, lower leagues uh, there's less uh, hustle around uh, whatever ha happens uh, in the club or around the team um, uh, whatever we do or we achieve does not have the same type of impact as uh, if we were in a top league and obviously the quality of the players uh, generally is better in in higher leagues but uh, from the the side of the the task in, uh, in hands uh, I, I would say it's quite similar and did you feel any difference in pressure like was the pressure different in top division as opposed to lower division yeah, look um not in my case because pressure is always in our uh, minds uh, uh, it's there will be always pressure it's 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 a matter how you deal with it or how you perceive it um i try to focus on my tax tasks in hand and uh, i will make myself as uh, as uh, protected as possible from external uh, uh, things and uh, i i do not pay much attention to media to to social media and uh, but yeah i i admit that might be might there be some more pressure if you play for for a top club and i had the opportunity for example when i was in a in uh, in Switzerland, uh, I coached uh, the most uh, uh, the the biggest clubs in uh, uh, historical clubs in Switzerland, Servette and the uh, Grasshoppers, and they are big clubs. They are the, the 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 clubs with the most titles in the in the country. So they have big uh, uh, or huge uh, amount of fans. Uh, media is always there is present uh, every day every minute and uh, you, you can imagine there there is always pressure around this type of uh, uh, jobs but um, well i as i said before i i try to make myself uh, 
immune to this type of uh, external uh, things. I'm sure in such a high pressure environment for you to be so have such a calm approach, it must be helping you and, you know, uh, pragmatically maybe approaching everything. So now I would also like to know your views. So when, according to you, is the right time for a coach to decide that, okay, now I want to go from being an assistant coach to a head coach and what factors would you consider? Look, uh, I think, I think, uh, you know, when you have uh, this type of offer or this type of possibility, we always will believe that we are ready uh, because it's it's our it's part of our nature to to believe in in us and uh, if things come to our hands, uh, it's because we deserve them or because we are ready for it. I, I would say I would say that the most thing or the most important uh, factor taking into account is the fact that you need to be really prepared. Yeah. If you are not prepared, you'll you'll miss an opportunity. I tell you from my side, uh, I started as a coach, as a head coach from the beginning. Yeah. But when I uh, became a, a top coach or a head coach in a top team, top division, at that time, I was assistant. It was my my first experience as an assist, assistant, yeah. and I really believed, uh, and I know I was ready for the the job. Uh, but if you ask me nowadays, if I would be uh, better prepared now than at back then, obviously, uh, I'm a much better coach at the moment than I was then. I was thirty eight, I believe. And uh, everything is moment. Uh, you sometimes you need to make decisions in the right moment. Uh, you have to feel it. You need to to assess your uh, situation because each situation, each uh, coach will have a a different timing, a different moment, a different uh, 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 position or a status in your uh, in your uh, career um well i would say it's very important to be ready to be prepared and uh, each one will have to decide when the situation uh, arises so basically to summarize it is that uh, we all will go for that offer when it does come but just try and be as ready as you can and uh, in terms of confidence to do the job well. Now, uh, you know, as a head coach, you have achieved success. You have won a championship in Switzerland and in Portugal. So in, if you reflect in the towards the past, what were some key actions you took to help those teams become successful and win championships? First, let me allow me to correct something. Yeah. Look, uh, success is not measured by the titles you win. Honestly, uh, fortunately, I had I've had the opportunity to win some titles, but uh, uh, look, I've done hard jobs uh, in a lot of circumstances, and uh, sometimes due to the context due to the resources you have uh, at your disposal you might be doing a way better uh, or more successful job in avoiding relegation than uh, winning a league title sure. uh, it's something that uh, we always forget and uh, you know sometimes coaches will never have the opportunity either because they chose the wrong projects or the wrong uh, step or the next step but uh, some of us we will never have the opportunity to win a, a bigger title or a major title or whatever uh, you know i read something or i heard something not long ago that uh, in uh, in football as well as as in other activities sometimes it is not uh, how hard you row or how good you row, it's the type of boat you get in. If you get in the right boat, you, the chances for you to, to win titles and to be succeed, uh, successful 
increased a lot. Uh, so uh, I would imagine that uh, if uh, Jose Mourinho or Pep Guardiola would be coaching, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Luton, I believe they would not be able to win the league, or the Premier League. So it's it's something that we have to have into account. But uh, uh, there's a lot of things. For example, you need to be in with the right people. People really need to be committed. Uh, it, you'll you'll have to have a culture or create your own culture inside of the club. Uh, you will have to have quality players, obviously, because without quality players, you will not be able. Even though sometimes you can build a better team with more have average players than with uh, top players, because you know football is is one of those uh, competitions or uh, games where even though you might not have your the best players, you might beat the best players. Because it's it's about it's a team, it's a collective uh, sport. So basically, yes, you need to be consistent. You need to be uh, having the right mindsets. I would say uh, because without the right mindsets, it will be really really difficult to achieve any success. So you reckon all of this was collectively a part of how you basically contributed to your championship wins in both the countries. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, deep knowledge about, about the league and the players, not only yours or ours, but also from uh, the opponent's teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. And being able to manage the moments because the moments are critical. You, you, you are... You have to be sure that uh, it's you will never win all the matches, even though you are pressed or under pressure to win all the matches. And you need to bounce back from uh, losses. And uh, sometimes you you have to face a series of uh, losses or defeats. One, two, three, uh, four games in a row without winning. Five games in a row without winning. And this is difficult to to manage because in the end it's very it's way easier to to work on top of winnings than uh, having to face uh, a negative energy inside of the dressing room and in the and on the training pitch i agree for sure for sure the environment is very different now this was you in professional football as a coach you have also worked at a very, very high level in youth football as well, having coached the Qatar under-19 football team. And you are also with Aspire, which is such a famous uh, youth academy in the Middle East. So, what are some of your key methods for player development? Uh, look, the decision to go to, uh, to, to this type of project uh, was very... Uh, I reflected a lot... And I decided to go to it uh, or embrace it because it was a very interesting. I felt it. It was a very interesting thing for me to do because I'm a I'm a lifelong learner, and I wanted to experience a different type of project. Um, and you know, in professional football, it's very difficult for us to find projects. And uh, if you have an opportunity to to experience this type of uh, path of play development uh, in a, in a, in a context where we had all the resources, uh, I I believe this this is something that you will have to to take on in your hands and embrace it. So I decided to go from professional football, having a career in top leagues to play a development and uh, academy work. I was I was uh, under 19 coach in a short period of uh, transition between coaches in the QFA. As you know, Aspire works very uh, close with, uh, with the QFA in Qatar. And um, 
we were providing in Aspai, we were providing the national team uh, coaches and we there was a hiatus of uh, where where we did not have a um, a, a coach uh, for a for a moment and uh, we were negotiating with another coach and i had we had the preparation for an asian asian cup so i i was asked to take that job in hands and i i did it and um, look when you are in a, in such a project like that uh, it's a huge huge uh, project uh, it's not um, an individual task or an individual job. You are part of a program or several programs. I was responsible or coordinating one uh, one department inside of the the whole uh, structure, and uh, uh, player development uh, was something that was clear for everybody. We created our own methodology. Uh, if you ask me, uh, my methods or uh, what I believe it's better in terms of uh, methodology, I would say there is no right answer for this uh, because every place, every circumstances or context are particular and you need, this is not one, uh, one fits all. You need to have a, uh, develop a program or a methodology accordingly. Uh, so it was a teamwork, uh, lots of coaches involved, lots of lots of departments involved, and um, the more uh, the more people are clear that nobody will have to work in a vacuum or separated from others. Uh, the better. Uh, we it was clear that uh, the approach to player development should be an holistic one. And, and uh, what would I tell you about the, what can be? Look, you need to provide uh, moments of competition to assess and to help players to to reflect on their performances. You need to have uh, very individually focused uh, moments, be it uh, individual feedbacks, uh, technical, theoretical approaches also, videos, clips, uh, um, even exercises for uh, some, uh, to work on some improvement points in with players. Uh, you'll have to have a, uh, um, a context uh, of a uh, team where players would have to evolve as uh, a member of a, a group uh, cooperating in order to to overcome obstacles uh, everything should be game related uh, specific uh, having sorry having to having into account uh, um a physical development of the player uh having into account also uh that every player in their team moments they are not all in the same moment of growth or maturation uh, i mean uh, bio bending uh, so uh we had a lot of uh uh, sciences, neurosciences, uh, working uh, with us, helping us uh, in our uh, daily tasks. So it's it's a very complex. It was a very complex uh, moment uh, of uh, player development, and uh, but it was a very rich, rich one. For sure, I can I can assume that there was so many so many factors involved. So I'd like to know. It would be interesting to know what is your own training and tactical mm -hmm. methodology. Look, uh, I think everything is related to my personal experiences in football. I was an attacking player, and uh, from my my perspective, 
I believe that we should develop players for uh, for a, a style of play that is more offensive. Uh, I never enjoyed much defending, although I I knew this was part of the the game, a very important one. Uh, in fact, uh, none of these moments in the game are separated from the others. Even though you are a, you have the ball, you need to be thinking or be be prepared uh, for the moment of loss. But uh, this must be adjusted or adapted according to what is your role in the moment or at the moment. If you have the ball in on your feet, or if you are not uh, in the center of the game, uh, so if you are in a cooperation mode or uh, intervention mode, um, so everybody needs to understand the, the role and the continuum flux flow of the game. Uh, where you win the ball, you lose the ball, you attack, you defend, everything is uh, is connected. Uh, so, um, game specific, whatever we should train should be related to the game. I'm not into um, having fitness uh, sessions uh, or fitness preparation or physical preparation uh, individually or separated from uh, the game context. Uh, so we have uh, at our disposable, disposal um, tools that help us to understand how to design a session according to or in order to achieve uh, certain goals and they we can include uh, physical uh, objectives in a, a tactical session and also emotional management of the of the the moments the players emotions uh, all has to be uh, connected and uh, interconnected and uh, yes, my I have I have a, a very aggressive uh, mentality towards the game. We want to be, I want to be proposing in proposing in the game. Uh, I want to attack. I want to win the duels. I want to I want to reduce spaces in a very aggressive way, because I want to be playing as much as possible in uh, the half of the opponent's uh, pitch. Uh, I, w I, I see the game as a, a game of uh, relationships inside of the pitch, trying to look for advantages, no matter which sort of it, of them. Uh, I, 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 I prefer a team that plays through the thirds instead of direct play, but I I am I will never say I will never tell a player to do not make, make a long pass if he sees an opportunity to go to the goal to a, an offensive player or an attacker because in the end uh, we need to bring the ball uh, to the attackers in the best way possible and uh, as quick as possible but with criteria uh, one thing I don't like in direct play is the fact that most of the times the attackers, and I was one, uh, the attackers receive the ball in very poor circumstances where they cannot uh, receive the ball facing the attack uh, um, with disadvantages, uh, with, uh, with uh, lots of pressure, with no support at all. And this is something that I don't, uh, I don't, uh, my, I don't like my teams to do. Uh, and um, I, I, it's very clear for me that uh, we need to be clever in moving the ball. And I believe the most important uh, thing is the relationship between time and space. Do we have time? Where is the space? and uh, the principle of progression which is 
uh, I should say it's the north of uh, or the most important pole uh, for our uh, playing uh, route. We need we need to progress with the ball, and this has to be clear in the in the players' minds. I think this is a quite a clear and uh, front foot kind of uh, methodology that you have, and I'm sure a lot of viewers, listeners are going to probably be rewinding because there's a lot of uh, notes that can be taken from you. Now there was another very very interesting milestone in your career. So you have observed some top coaches firsthand through your internships and camps. Now, these include some of the biggest names in football coaching, Mourinho, Guardiola, Koeman, Hiddink, Rijkaard and uh, Xavi, as well as Juan de Ramos. So, what were your greatest observations of these coaches, having seen them actually in action? Look, when you mentioned something like uh, what are the key factors uh, for us to become uh, football coaches or uh, head coaches, um, I would say also assistant coaches because coaching is coaching, no matter if you are leading uh, staff or not. You need to prepare yourself. You need to study a lot. You need to look for for information. You need to research. Fortunately, nowadays uh, there's a mass mass uh, mass distribution of information or sharing of information. When I started to coach, it was not exactly like that. And I had to look for information. And since I remember, I was um, uh, grabbing a, a trolley or a backpack and I would go around asking questions uh, and uh, trying to find opportunities to attend the uh, interne internships or camps with other coaches, other teams, trying to learn. I think we should be humble enough to to question whatever is our knowledge and look for more uh, for more uh, possibilities, uh, more perspectives. Uh, because in the end, uh, we need to build our own uh, methodology, our own ideas based on on what is, are our beliefs, the way we see our uh, our um, the the game itself and the, its logics and uh, having uh, this opportunity was something that I always uh, cheered, uh, embraced. Uh, I'm grateful to all these guys that at some moment, some of them more than once, for example, I was more than once with Guardiola. And uh, this is, this is uh, quite uh, rich and uh, um, I, 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 I've seen also the other way around. I, I've seen lots and lots and lots of young coaches and even older coaches than me approaching me, asking me for asking my opinion about uh, uh, something related to the game. Uh, and this is this is how things become more clear because we question, we question, we have doubts and then we look for answers and we reflect on it. And uh, we build uh, something that in the end uh, is supposed mm -hmm. to be very complex and interesting uh, also. So for just for the benefit of the listeners, because, you know, not everyone has had such close access to these top coaches. Is there anything like, are you, could you maybe, you know, name one of the coaches and tell us what you felt was very different about them or special about them? Look, I learned from, from all of them. Uh, I've seen very interesting things, different perspectives, different approaches, different methodology, even different me uh, philos philosophies. Because, uh, for example, even, uh, for example, I can tell you, Jose Mourinho, in, when I first uh, contacted him the first time, he had a different approach to the game than he has now. Uh, we evolve. Uh, so I learned a lot uh, with some of them, the way they were leading the, 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 the team and the players, others the way they were managing the relationship with the players, yeah. others uh, on how to uh, defend better, 
uh, how to design better training sessions, how to um, communicate. Uh, José Mourinho is a master in communication, for example. Guzidink was fantastic in terms in terms of uh, team management, the way he was leading the team. Uh, of course, uh, others are uh, fantastic because they have uh, different and uh, different, differentiated ideas. Uh, Pep Guardiola, Xavi, they they come from a different type of uh, football, and uh, I really love the way they look at the game and they 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 put uh, different lenses uh, in observing the details, and this is something that it's really, really uh, interesting. For sure. And it's so, I, I guess that uh, you've been probably, you're one of the few coaches who has observed such top coaches from a close lens. So I think overall adding everything, you've had quite what we call a rich footballing experience. Now, you know, on LinkedIn, I had once found a post where you spoke about cognitive training in football. So can you tell us a bit more about this? Because it's best to probably hear from you know from you about it. It's such a deep topic. Yeah, look, I I really I really like all the things that are related to to performance, to performance and uh, developing players and teams. I as you know, we are competitive beasts. We, we since since a kid we are in football. We learn how to compete, and we grow this type of uh, um, mindset, this type of uh, approach to the game, where you need to beat an opponent, you need to be better than the opponent, you need to improve. Uh, it's a daily a daily quest, and. Uh, as I as I, I I believe you already noticed, I I value all the factors involved in the game, but I'm more into having criteria. Uh, I, I think I I told you that, uh, for example, duels, winning duels is something really important in in the game, but uh, for me. Uh, it's even more in, important if you are an intelligent player and you avoid duels. Yes. Uh, you need to be ready to, to win a duel, but if you are smart enough, you will not have to go to a duel. Uh, and this brings us to the cognitive, cognitive training because football is intelligence. Uh, it's it has a lot of uh, strategic uh, approach, uh, intelligence, uh, being smart, predicting, uh, giving continuity to the game, and you need to get gather information from the game. You know the game is a very con a very it's a chaotic, non-linear environment, yeah. and you need to get information from there in order you can make decisions. And this is where uh, comes my my passion for this type of uh, matter, uh, because mostly coaches put their the emphasis of uh, or their of their approach to, to player development and play and team uh, performance into more more uh, mental and physical approaches yeah. i i like to have intelligent players and develop intelligent players and intelligent uh, teams i want them to press high i want to be very aggressive but being criteria about the moments of uh, pressing if a player is the nearest uh, player or is the first defender and he needs to press, uh, I want him to press. But if he looks behind and he's alone, he's detached from the block, yeah. why is he going to press? To lose time and energy? Uh, an opponent would not even need to, to dribble him, a pass to uh, to uh, the nearest opponent, and he's 
player is already out of the block and we have one one um, one less player in in our defensive unit because we should operate as a unit so i try to design uh principles and uh, macro uh, small principles and macro principles in order my teams have uh, better decisions according to the 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 information they gather from the game yeah. and uh, also i try to help them to gather the most important uh, information they need to get from the game in order they make decisions yeah. and then it's a matter of uh, implementing uh, moments or circumstances where they need to face problems, yeah. just make decisions, face consequences of the the wrong decisions, uh, reflect on the good decisions, on the bad decisions. How can we uh, overcome a pressure of uh, a structure of three attackers or? Uh, two only or uh, one center uh, forward or how will we find the um, pockets of spaces in between the the, the lines of the opponent yeah. uh, so these kind of uh, things are built in the context of uh, a game related situation manipulating time space and the uh, number of players according to what we feel it's more important uh, in order we achieve uh, our objectives for each exercise because even a small stupid rondo uh, can be a moment of uh, cognitive uh, impact in the train you can put five against two and you just allow the players to okay move the ball and have fun like that and they will do without thinking what they are doing but you can also uh, add some content uh, and information to this uh, same exercise mm -hmm. you can tell them look uh, we need to overcome these two with a pass in the middle so how will we move the ball in order we move the players and create a gap but in the uh, in the right moment, we make a progression with a through ball between them. Uh, we are under pressure. Are you going to play the ball or you keep the ball? How you break this pressure? Uh, the nearest or first station pass or a second station pass, the furthest. Um, even the tension that you put on the ball is can be a message to not only to our teammates, but also to the opponents. We play slow to attract the pressure. We make a strong, tense pass to break the pressure. And these type of things uh, we need to manipulate uh, or to create constraints in the training sessions in order we have impact in the cognitive uh, a load of the player, making them realize that the game is a, a game of uh, uh, opposition and cooperation, and we need to be smart and intelligent in uh, finding solutions for every obstacle, every problem that we ha will have to face in the game. And uh, me as a coach, and as a designer of uh, exercises, I need to create scenarios that reproduce the very nature of the game yeah. and use this uh, in my methodology in order that I can really grow uh, intelligent uh, players. I think this is amazing, you know, just to hear a senior coach like you talk about uh, things like this, there's so much learning, so many ideas that can be picked up from these. So thank you for this. But unfortunately, we have time only for, uh, we don't have too much time left now. So we have one question that we ask every guest before we let them go, which is, what are your future plans now? Look, uh, I really don't know. Um... At the moment, I'm I'm home, 
since the, I'm home, I, I wrote a book. I, I've been working on several projects, even uh, cre uh, built a, a platform for, for coaches to share knowledge, to, to improve, to help also uh, other coaches to be better or to become better. Because in the end, look, I have, I have a, a traject that it was mine it's not better or worse it, it was mine and i have some knowledge that uh, can be helpful for some coaches willing to overcome obstacles and uh, uh, look i'm i'm not making the same mistakes i was making in the beginning of my career so uh, just to tell you that i'm i'm also in contact daily contact with young coaches and other uh, uh, established coaches uh, because uh, i want to share knowledge i want to learn more i want to see how they are doing things i want to i think this this is my way of uh, looking for answers my my uh, restlessness uh, about uh, knowledge and I'm looking for projects I, I've had uh, offers to to go back to training uh, to coaching but uh, either because I was not chosen uh, because this also ap happens but also because I did not feel the project was solid or I would not uh, have the, the right resources in order I could implement my ideas and be a winning team because in the end we are paid to win uh, yeah i'm waiting for uh, the right uh, offer the right project even i can become uh, i i'm open to become a technical director uh, uh, a CEO of a sports organization because as you can imagine I'm I, I gathered a lot of uh, knowledge right. and uh, I'm I'm I I have uh, I've been into this industry for a long time and I know old corners of it and uh, so I'm I'm a much better prepared professional for uh, for this uh, for this uh, or any challenge that can that I will have to face so yeah I don't know what is the future but uh, I'm better prepared prepared than I was one year ago yeah. this is my my the only thing I can tell you I really for, for sure there are no doubts I really wish you best of luck with it but one last uh, one last request now the majority of our uh, viewers are coaches. So can you just enlighten us a little bit more about what you have created for coaches? Sorry, I, I did not understand. So I said that, you know, you have created, you have created this kind of community for coaches. So because yeah. most of us are viewers are coaches, can you just tell us a little bit more about that and how people can access it? Yeah. I decided to create a platform, which in the end is, is basically creating a community for coaches. Yeah. We have a lot, uh, all sorts of coaches from all places of the globe, because in the end, I decided to do it in English because uh, it would make more sense for me because we are citizens of the world yeah. and uh, the world is around the corner. Yeah. And uh, basically, we share knowledge. I, I'm simulating staff meetings with a very small group of, of coaches that I invite. Uh, some of them, they can enroll, uh, where we discuss topics. Uh, we have tactical talks about uh, the game itself, tactical dynamics and uh, tactical uh, breakdowns uh we we invite people to share their passion within the the coaching uh, um, side of the the job yeah. 
uh, we have moments where people uh, contact me directly or through the platform for questions and answers. Yeah. Uh, we discuss, we created the discussion groups. We discuss uh, knowledge, uh, tactical things, uh, methodologies, uh, play development, all these kind of things. Yeah. And uh, it's called brainstorming football. We also have a, a newsletter. Uh, it's called Frenic Football Weekly. And uh, yeah, if you go on LinkedIn, people will find it. Uh, we are not yet, we, this was supposed to be a paid uh, platform. We are not yet uh, making it payable, but it will eventually uh, very soon. Uh, because we want, uh, look, it's not about the money, it's about uh, sharing knowledge and uh, understanding uh, things. And honestly, I also have been very, very busy uh, with a lot of things uh, around uh, football coaching and football management. So uh, th I want this uh, community to grow uh in a very organic way uh, please feel free to drop by and uh, in, enroll or uh, become a member and uh, and let's uh, make it bigger because uh, in the end we learn better together yes indeed so just for the viewers it is brainstorming football so you have to search brainstorming football and if you still don't uh, find it then you can just add joao at the end of it and you'll definitely be directed to it so yes thank you coach joao for your time this was very very in interesting very much. a lot of things learned new things picked up and this is basically the objective of this podcast so thanks a lot for your time my pleasure and uh, all the the luck for your ventures